This is the 18th annual Brass Spectacular by the Manchester, Connecticut Citadel Band with the Salvation Army Massachusetts Divisional Band participating. Tonight will also be Michael Orfatelli's last act as bandmaster of the Manchester Citadel Band after 55 years of service. We'd like to welcome everybody this evening to this wonderful festival of music. I love that word, festival. It reminds me of a feast, and that is indeed what we're going to have this evening. A feast of all types of music. Well, not all types, but some varied types of music. And of course, all in the brass band genre. And we're excited tonight to have guests with us here at the Manchester Civil Corps. Our guests are from Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Divisional Band under the direction of Bandmaster Matthew Lunn. And uh, they've uh, got quite a group here. They outnumber our band, but they're going to play first for us. And then we will play the Manchester Citadel Band, of which I'm privileged to be a part. And then after that, we're going to join together. Now, I would suggest at that point you find some earplugs, uh, because we've got about 60 people. And brass players are known for the pleasure that they derive from playing loudly. So we'll see what happens at that point. I, I trust they'll, they'll do their best to come up with the piano. But we want to welcome you tonight. It's, a, it's an interesting night for us. We've been working on this concert for a long time. And uh, it's a special night for some folks here as well. So be blessed. We want to, first of all, honor God. And so we're going to, at this time, go to him in prayer as we begin our concert. Shall we pray together? Our Father God, you have been so good to us throughout our lives. You give us this beautiful place in which we can sit, which we can be comfortable. We thank you, Lord, for the fellowship which is here, for the expectation of being blessed by music. We thank you for these brass instruments, for these people who play, for the generations of uh, instruction and of just in the enjoyment of, of putting forth a sound which blesses others for the kingdom of God. We thank you for all of those blessings, those and, and too many others to enumerate this evening. But we thank you and we ask your blessing, we ask your presence. Father, help our hearts to be in the right place. Lord, let, the, let our hearts be concentrating on what it is that you have to say to us and help us to enjoy the blessed music as well. So Lord, without uh, speaking too much further, we know that you're here. You were here before we ever got here and you'll be here when we're gone. But we thank you, Lord, for your presence now through this music. Bless us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
welcome you to the Salvation Army. I know it's not my place to welcome you to, but you're part of the Salvation Army. Every place is your place. So it's great to see all of you here tonight. We are the Massachusetts Divisional Band. Our second item on the program this evening, we are going to feature our principal cornet player, Rick Castillo. Now, when I asked uh, Rick to tell me what he does professionally, it was something complicated, so I'm just going to tell you that he is a computer whiz, a specialist. Okay? <laughs> He's been in Mass Brass for over 18 years, and I've known him personally for about 12 years. He's a great guy and a good friend. Uh, Bandmaster Rick also just recently took over uh, as Bandmaster of the Quincy Temple Corps in Quincy, Massachusetts. The solo Rick is going to bring us tonight, listen to these words. Just where he needs me, my Lord has placed me. Just where he needs me, there would I be. And since he found me by love, he's bound me to serve him joyfully. What can I do to ease life's heavy burdens? What can I do to help mankind in need? Just where I am, I'll share my neighbor's hardship, lighten his load, and prove a friend indeed. Just where he needs me, my Lord has placed me. Just where he needs me, there would I be. And since he found me by love, he's bound me to serve him joyfully. Rick Castillo.
For those of you that attend a lot of concerts and you're kind of skimming through the program, searching for our theme or what we're trying to say tonight, well, let me stop you. There is no theme, okay? Our program uh, this evening, I wanted to try to give you what we do as a divisional band. And what that is every year is very different. We play a couple concerts, but a lot of times we're used as a service band or we may play at family camp over the summer. So everything that we have uh, are playing this evening is something that we've played in the past five years, or at least looked at, at different kinds of programs. Uh, the next piece, Battle Hymn of the Republic, uh, goes in line with that, uh, well, I was gonna say theme, even though I said there was no theme. Uh, in, the, in the years before uh, COVID-19, the Massachusetts Division of the Salvation Army made it a priority to honor the veterans of the United States military. And there were several events and concerts that we had where many times the Salvation Army Band was there uh, to thank service members from our military. So this piece would have showed up on one of those concerts. You might know the, the tune, Battle Hymn of the Republic, and maybe you were in an all-state choir, Truth is Marching On. This is not that piece. In a gospel-style, kind of pizzazzy way, uh, you're going to hear the tune, uh, but very differently. So this is Battle Hymn of the Republic. Listen for our congas back here and our drum set. It's a little bit wild. It's Battle Hymn of the Republic. serious than that one. Uh, this is entitled Serenity by Eric Ball. You'll know the hymn tune, or most of you will know the hymn tune associated with this piece. The chorus is simple. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. The man who penned those words, Horatio Spafford, was conducting business in Chicago in the 1800s. His wife and his four children were with him, and uh, they were going to go together all to Europe, and so he sent his wife and his four children on a ship alone because he had to stay in Chicago to conduct business. The ship sank in the Atlantic. All four children died. The telegram came back to Mr. Spafford from his wife. Saved alone, what should I do? 
Mr. Spafford got on the first ship that he could that went back to Europe, and about the place in the ocean where the, the ship had sank, the captain uh, brought him to the bow of the deck and said, this is where the ship went down. You know, what, did a, what a shattering moment that was. And at that time, he penned these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. One thing I think we missed in the COVID era and being together is experiencing music and art together with each other. When you play music or you observe a painting or a picture, uh, the art is a reflection of humanity. That art stays in time. But if you think about it, the composer who wrote the music the music got matched to the person who wrote the words, and when they created those things, they had all these life experiences that, that uh, uh, attributed to what they could say. Now, fast forward in time, me as the conductor, I get to bring my life experiences and interpret the music. The band gets to take my interpretation and put their own layer of humanity on the music. And then finally, here tonight, you get to hear the song Think about the words and piece your own layer of humanity to this piece of art. It's difficult to say when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast, thou hast taught me to know it is well with my soul. Cherish those words tonight. Enjoy the art. It's okay to get lost in the music.
for your sensitivity in participating and listening to the art and for music tonight. This is our final piece uh, for the Massachusetts Divisional Band portion of the concert. It's entitled Shine on Us.
Well, let me add my uh, good evening and welcome uh, to that which has already been said. This is a great evening for us. Uh, this is our 18th Brass Spectacular, and so we're, this is one of our highlights of the year. We begin our part of the uh, program with a march, which was part of the Golden Jubilee National Music uh, Championship back in 1930. And I always found that an interesting piece of music, this is uh, Army of God by Emil Soderstrom. I was, as a kid, thought it was an interesting piece because it's number five in the festival series. And number six is a march homeward bound by H.A. A. Turkington, who is a member of this corps. So he, he got second place and Emu was in first place, but uh, the fact that he got some mention was, was great. So here it is, Army of God. Well, I've been looking forward to this next number for lots of different reasons. It's just uh, 
really a terrific cornet solo, and uh, we have one of the best cornet soloists you'd ever want to hear. I think you're going to enjoy this number entirely. The Caprice for Cornet, and our soloist this evening is Bandmaster Bob Venables. If you'll give him a hand, please.
I'm not sure who programmed anything after that, but uh, <laughs> pure foolishness. Uh, I'll take the blank. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I, I'm tired, actually. I play it <laughs> but we play next one of my favorite pieces. It's become a real favorite of mine. It's called The Shepherd Song. It's an uh, old melody. It's a bucolic scene, if you can imagine yourself in the midst of a meadow somewhere and some sheep grazing nearby. It's called The Shepherd Song, and it's arranged by Goff Richards. So far, so good. I probably shouldn't have said anything. If you hear a clunker in the next few pieces, it might be me. It's appropriate that we just heard a song called The Shepherd's Song because I wanted to share something with you from uh, 1 Samuel, which speaks about a shepherd real quickly and talks about David and Saul's service. It's 1 Samuel chapter 16. And on verse 14, there's kind of a strange verse that says, Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. 
it's something to study and something to think about and look, look at. But in the 15th verse, Saul's attendants said to him, See, an evil spirit from God has tormented you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes upon you and you will feel better. And then, so Saul said to his attendants in verse 17, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. He apparently knew some harp players, some harpists who were not the best. And then in verse 23, we jump down and it says, Whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. I got to thinking about that and I got to thinking how much better off Saul would have been if he had had Alexa. <laughs> I have Alexa at home. Wonderful invention. I know some of you older folks are saying, who? My wife's name is not Alexa, it's Kathy. But I have this little box called Alexa that I can ask questions. I can get up in the morning and I can say, Alexa, what's the temperature in Manchester, Connecticut today? The temperature in Manchester, Connecticut is 54. The high will be 62. Thank you, Alexa. I always feel the need to be polite to Alexa. I have no reason for that. I just, I'm assuming that she appreciates it. <laughs> Alexa, what time is it? The time is 11.54. Yeah. You know, she just answers all the questions. Alexa, uh, what is the capital of Spain? And Alexa will tell you. Whatever you need to know, Alexa will tell you. But one of the greatest benefits of Alexa is that Alexa will give you whatever music you want. And so you can say, Alexa, play Keith Green for me. I'm a big Keith Green fan on Sunday mornings. Usually on Sunday mornings, I'll say, Alexa, play Keith Green for me. And some Sunday mornings, if I'm feeling adventurous, I'll say, Alexa, play David Crowder for me. And I'll hear David Crowder this morning. I don't know what came over me this morning, but I said, Alexa, Play Me and Bobby McGee by Janis Joplin. <laughs> now, if you know that song, you're hearing it, you're hearing, na, 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 na. I won't get into it. Uh, I don't do a very good Janis Joplin. But uh, that's the song I wanted to hear. Uh, Me and Bobby McGee, and it just lifted my spirits. Uh, no, it's not a Christian song by any means, although there is a line in there which caught my ear, and it said, Living Lord is easier when Bobby sang the blues, right? Living Lord was easier when Bobby sang the blues. And I got to thinking about that in conjunction with our concert this day. We've been making music all day from the time we got here this morning through the afternoon, many of us rehearsing, and on into the evening. And so it's been a joyous day. Living is easier when we're with music, isn't it? Living is easier when the Lord drives away the blues that we have through music. When the Lord drives away those spirits which would attack us. Maybe not a harpist, maybe that's not what you have, but we have a band, we have a piano, we have guitars, we have our voice to sing. And I got to thinking about that, that God has given me down through the years the benefit, friends, of growing up in the Salvation Army with the Salvation Army songbook, and those words are embedded in my mind and in my heart. I'll get up in the morning and I'll give my wife a test. I'll say, honey, what's the second verse to this song? And I'll sing the first verse. And she says, I don't know. And I say, well, here it is. And I give her the second verse. I have a just a, a knack for remembering songs. One of the songs we're going to play in a little while is called Salvation Song. And there's, you'll hear the horns play it, and I think the baritones join us, I'm not sure. Uh, my part, after all, is the most important part. And uh, <laughs> it goes something like this. I'll sing, we'll sing in the morning the songs of salvation. We'll sing in the noontide, what? The songs of His love. And when we arrive, when we've arrived at the end of our journey, we'll sing the songs of Zion in the courts above. I am looking forward to singing. I have some friends here in this room who claim that they can't uh, stay on pitch, they can't sing a tune. The old phrase, couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. But I have a feeling when we're singing the songs of Zion in heaven together, what a joyful sound that will be. And this has been a foretaste of that this evening. I pray that you've been blessed by getting together and having a festival, a feast of God's music. Amen. Thank you, Major. Well, Bruce Broughton is, uh, as some of you know, a, a 
composer who has been uh, writing in Hollywood for years, has been given some awards, a very famous Hollywood writer. But he's also the son of a Salvation Army officer, and a Salvationist, I guess, in his younger day. And this last number is uh, from his pen. And he uses a very old Salvation Army song. And the words are these. O good old way, how sweet thou art. May none of us from thee depart, but may our actions always say, we're marching in the good old way. For I have a sweet hope of glory in my soul, for I know I have, and I feel I have, a sweet hope of glory in my soul, the good old way. Thank you. 
The next piece we're going to play uh, is a, the second movement in a suite of pieces, and it's based on an old chorus called I'll Follow Thee. I try to be a bandmaster that really uh, depends on the words, and while we were rehearsing earlier, I forgot the words. <laughs> One of those moments. Uh, this is a great arrangement, but I'll follow thee of life the giver, I'll follow thee suffering redeemer, I'll follow thee, here's the line, deny thee never, by thy grace I'll follow thee.
Well, Mike, I, think, I, I want you to help me with those courtesies. Can you do, do that with me? You've done these concerts I've done a, a few times, yeah. yeah. Probably about half a century or better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a fact, just a fact. <laughs> I, I just haven't gotten any better at it. <laughs> Well, so courtesies, we pay our courtesies, we pay our respects, and there are many people at the Salvation Army whom we love and respect, uh, not just the leaders, but the musicians as well, and all those who are in, in the audience. Unfortunately, we can't recognize every person here, but we did want to say a special guest to those who are leaders in our respective divisions, and we would like to say, first of all, a welcome to our divisional leaders from the Massachusetts Division, Majors Everett and Patty Henry. Would you stand up for Thank you for making sure that music is, is going on in the Massachusetts Division. We appreciate that. And then we'd like to uh, welcome and greet our own divisional leaders, uh, Majors uh, Stephen and Deborah Ashcraft. <laughs> That's for the Southern New England Division. How many of you enjoyed that offertory today? Can you get here? <laughs> I want to say we're spoiled here at Manchester. We get that every Sunday morning, and so we're so appreciative of that. Thank you, Karen, for your part in this evening's uh, festival. I want to say service, but it's been a festival, hasn't it? It's been a festival. Also, want to um, thank those who are in the what we call sound booth. It's really our balcony, and that's uh, Jerry and Peg Parrott. Let's thank them, and Gordon Raymer. Let's thank them. And we'd also like to thank uh, Ruth Hayes, who is not here this evening, I think, but Ruth uh, got the programs printed for us and, and, and always does that for our programs. We're thankful for Ruth. And you don't have to applaud because she's not here, but she's watching. We know that. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> you might say uh, we're ruthless uh, this evening, but at any rate, I couldn't resist. <laughs> we do want to. Uh, Say a special thank you to the Massachusetts Divisional Band and to their bandmaster, Bandmaster Matthew Lund. And then I think one final thank you, unless you can think of someone, or my wife can, can yell from back there. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we'd also like to thank those members of the Manchester Citadel Band tonight who are really not regularly, weekly members of the band, but who've been rehearsing for us for this festival. And we thank them for coming and joining us, joining with us. Some of them are from the uh, Charter Oak Brass Band, some of them from our uh, mass, Western Mass uh, brand, uh, Brass Band, and they're, they're just great. We thank you all for joining with us and, and beefing us up uh, this evening. So thank you. We thank you for your, your contribution to this evening. Well, um, to, we, Mike is sick of being recognized, I'll tell you that. But, uh, you know, this is, a, this is really his, his uh, final concert as bandmaster with the uh, Manchester Brass Band. Perhaps. Uh, we'll see what happens, right, Mike? <laughs> we, we never know what's going to happen. Kathy's going, yes, it is his last time. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're thankful for the many, many years, and Mike received an award this morning, uh, a, a, a recognition of his service, and it was for more than half a century of, of serving as bandmaster. And so we appreciate him for that. And I want you to just uh, join with me, if you would, for, this is our final time, no more recognitions, okay, Mike? And, and we want to, would you please stand with me and just thank Mike for the service that he's given to us. someone else. <laughs> when you take the band at 17, you're hoping they're not going to find someone too quickly. The point is, it is time for someone else to take the reins and lead us into the future. 
And I'm looking forward to taking my place back in the cornet section. And you know, over this last couple of years, we found, I think, the perfect guy to take the band in, Bandmaster Master Bob Venables. And There's no question as to his abilities, that's for sure. I think he proved that tonight beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I, I'm excited to sit under his uh, leadership. Please don't misunderstand, I've had a great time. Throughout my life it has required a, day, a great deal of time and energy, but it has given it a chance. Uh, if given a chance, I would not change much, if anything. As it has shaped my life in Christ and has helped me to find the joy in service. I can tell you that the time spent was not a sacrifice, but an enormous privilege. And I think those who had leadership in the Army in, in the music forces will tell you the same thing. And God blessed, uh, God has blessed me over and over as a bandmaster. And as this experience has given me opportunities in life that are unique and special. Growing up in Manchester, I was fortunate to have so many great role models. There's not enough time, and I, I say this very sincerely, there's not enough time for me to express my gratitude for the old saints of this core who taught me about salvation, sacrifice, and service. Often when I was discouraged about the band or the core, an old saint would come to mind. <clears throat> and I would think to myself, I can't let them down. I must persevere. So many of my first bandsmen back in 1960 whatever it was, <laughs> played, <laughs> played well into their 80s and 90s, uh, and that's perseverance. I had a tuba player who played an old sousaphone, big sousaphone, and he was the shortest guy in the band. He was 93 when he stopped playing, so I feel a little guilty, you know, retiring so early. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the privilege and great joy to work with songster leader Krinjak, and earlier, my aunt, Auntie Lee, and, and that leadership, that, that leadership team has always been a great blessing to me. So thank you, Karen, for your friendship and, and uh, your influence on me. I want to take this opportunity to thank my family for the years of sacrifice that they had to make. Army banding is often a family affair. And when your father is the bandmaster, there's an extra burden. I'm sure my kids still remember the madman who refused to be late on Sunday morning. That would be me. <laughs> or for musical events. We always had to be there earlier than anyone else. To my four children, I say thank you, and I'm sorry for being such a tyrant at times. Kathy and I got married on December 20th, so you see I'm not very bright. <laughs> and I can tell you that our, our early anniversaries were spent at prison, prison ministries, <laughs> caroling with the band, playing in the nursing homes, and sometimes just at a rehearsal, because I never felt I could miss for anything less than my own passing, which hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so a special thanks to Kathy, who deserves more recognition as she made the sacrifice without a whole lot of reward. She's been a good sport through it all. I'm not sure I'm worthy of all this recognition, there have been some great moments and some moments I'd love to have back. But through it all, I've embraced the words of the cornet solo that Bandmaster Bob Richardson asked me to play when I was just a teenager. And the words are this, reckon on me, following me. Living forever, thy servant to be. Cloudy or fine, Lord, I am thine. Until my face I shall see. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> finish our program uh, this evening with this great uh, song that was made famous by Mario Lanza. And 
some of you may remember Mario Lanza. I guess I am dating myself still. Mario Lanza thing. But after the benediction, we'll play this prelude. And the words are this. I'll walk with God. From this day on, his helping hand, I'll lean upon, uh, I'll lean upon. This is my prayer, my humble plea. May the Lord be ever with me. There is no death, though eyes grow dim. There is no fear when I'm near to him. I'll lean on him forever, and he'll forsake me never. I'll walk with God. I'll take his hand. I'll talk with God. He'll understand. I'll pray to him each day to him. I'll walk with God. I'll have the benediction and then that post it. Would you pray with me? Lord, you've been very good to us today. From the minute we woke up and took our first breath, you started pouring down blessing on us today. We want to honor you now and say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being with us through holiness meeting, through our walks, perhaps, our, our just quiet time. Lord, you've taught us something new today. And then, Lord, you ended with a celebration, a celebration of music. And honestly, Lord, it's been a balm for my soul today. So thank you for the calming of my heart through the songs that have been played tonight. And I want to thank you, Lord, for Mike's reminder of those who have gone before us, those who have been our mentors, those who have taken time for us. Lord, I see faces, and I'm so grateful for them, that they loved me enough to discipline me, to teach me, to put their arm around me just to love me. I'm grateful for them. And Lord, I ask that you would put that on our hearts, that we would find someone to mentor to as well. Help us to share your love, Lord, in everything that we say and do. In Jesus' name.